And uh, that really shows that people are really taking their, serious, their career seriously. Uh, one of the things that really inspires me is how I see amazing talent every day. And typically, uh, one of the, well, I say the most um, prominent things is how people advance their careers. The strategies they put in place to um, boost their profile uh, and basically their job set strategies. So typically when I speak to someone and say, hey, um, how are you going about your job or searching for a new, new job? Um, I, I hear a lot of um, sometimes vague um, strategies. Um, few people do have a number of ways they go around it. Some are very effective, some not so effective. So today we're going to discuss um, about some of these things, uh, the do's and don'ts, uh, but more retrospectively in terms of how do you create the best profile via your CV in order for you to advance your career. Um, so once again, I'm happy to be here um, collaborating with um, NUTM on this workshop. Uh, we assume that this workshop will take about an hour, maybe about 20 to 25 minutes of, of presentation. And then we'll jump into the Q&A session where I'll be glad to take any uh, questions from any of the participants. So um, definitely it's going to be a very good one. So give me a minute and um, I do plan to share my screen. So Hemant, if you don't mind, um, I can share my presentation. Sure, Sean, you can go ahead with sharing your screen. Yes, now you can. Uh, it's there on the bottom of this. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So interestingly enough, you've been able to deep dive into what Reventify does. Uh, I won't speak so much on it for now. Um, however, this is a presentation in terms of table of content. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about you know how to search for a job give you some info in terms of the job search statistics, um, how to plan your career, because I think it's very important that before you even decide that this is the job that you want to take, you have to have a long-term view of um, your career, so to speak. We're gonna also deep dive into some job hunting strategies as well. Uh, then before we go into the nitty gritty of the topic of creating a customized CV for your job application. So very brief on me, I'm the founder CEO of Reventify. Uh, we created a platform where it's easy for professionals like yourself to create tailor-made CVs for any, form, uh, any kind of job that they're interested in. Um, you can do this in as little as 10 minutes. All the CV templates are ATS um, enabled, um, as well as the fact that we do have customized templates based on your job titles. We makes it easy for you to get suggestions on bullet points when creating like the work experience section, the skills section, and things like that. Uh, in terms of what I've done, I've spent the last um, 13 years or so in various um, industries, but more specifically in the banking and finance industry. And for the last five years, I've been a hiring manager, not an HR manager, but purely hiring candidates in a lot of startups that I've been involved in. And over the last five years, I've interviewed at least 400 candidates and hired over 30 uh, for the companies I do work for. Uh, I'm a director of Lentico, Ron Gas, and OK High. Uh, two of them are startups and one's a manufacturing company. Uh, my background is in accounting, although I did study an MBA from um, IA Business School as I decided to move into the startup world. And, uh, you know, in terms of my aspirations, uh, I, Reventify really wants to help people get to the next level of their career. So one of the major things that we are hoping to do is to help a million plus professionals build amazing careers. Uh, we are the more or less in the starting phase. We've been around for the last uh, nine, 10 months. And there we had tens of thousands of people that have built their CV through the platform. So um, with all, all the insight that we've gained throughout this entire process, we're going to try and take a snapshot of some of those things that really help people to gain um, entry into their careers and obviously build it from there. So one of the things I like to talk about is job search statistics. You know, um, when I talk to a lot of candidates, they don't really know how competitive it is to get a job. Typically when you submit an application uh, for any prominent firm, 
you would realize that you have about 400 to 450 people that have applied for the same position. And typically maybe one or two people will get that job. So what happens during the process, right? You have a lot of people that are unqualified candidates. You have a lot of people that um, have made dumb mistakes. So you see at the bottom of the pile, right? These are people that are automatically rejected uh, because they don't qualify at all. Then even at the top of the spectrum, you have some people that might have some skill sets. Um, so you see mismatch skills about 181 job applicants. It's very well uh, possible that some of these 181 job applicants could have potentially moved to the qualified list. Uh, however, because they did not customize their CV for that job position, they missed out on an opportunity to be interviewed. So typically throughout the entire process, yes, there might be some test that is conducted by the company, depending on the, on the institution. However, at the end of the day, the hiring manager is not going to interview 100 candidates. He's going to look specifically about at what makes this candidate unique, you know, and the first place to always look out is on the CV. What is in that CV that makes you unique? What is in that CV that depicts that you have the skill set to perform on the job? And from then on, they decide on how many candidates they want to interview, and eventually one or two will get that job, right? So that's really what we're going to discuss um, in this session today. Now, in terms of your career plan, I always tell people that don't just throw your CVs everywhere. Don't just say, oh, um, today I was on LinkedIn or on Jobberman and you know I applied for 10 jobs. That's not a very good strategy. You always have to start with the end goal in mind. Where do you see your career um, five years, 10 years from now? What line of industry do you want to take in? What kind of um, experiences do you want to build throughout your entire career? That is something that you have to um, put in place before you even start to jump on. So in terms of the career planning stage, I always look at it in three phases, right? First of all, you have the evaluation phase, which is where you think of your technical skills. What are the skills I have today that is valuable to an employer? What are my soft skills? Am I, very, am I a good communicator? Am I a good collaborator? Are there specific things about me that could be useful in certain industries, in certain job? Um, for just certain job profiles, for example. Um, so you differentiate between an engineer from someone that is customer facing, for example, maybe someone in customer service. Those are two different skill sets. So you have to look inwards and say, look, today, what are the things that I present that is suitable for a specific career? Then you obviously have to go into what are the things that you like to enjoy? Do you like to talk to people? Do you like to sit behind a desk and just uh, you know, crunch numbers? Those things are very important. Uh, because enjoying a job makes it worthwhile. You're not only looking at the income side of things, but you're also looking at the fact that you can contribute more when you're motivated, when you're enjoying your place of work, when you're enjoying working um, in a certain environment, which is always very important. Uh, also think about your professional track record if you've been working for a while. So let's say, for example, you've been working for the last five years, right? What are the things that you have done that you... You, you can include in your accomplishment. What are the things that you have done that you're most proud of? You have to look inwards and say, look, these are the things that I've done that makes me worthy for a future employer. Now there's something I coined, which is called the personal endowment, which is just the characteristic or traits that um, a human has, whether, accru whether acquired or inherited that makes them superior. So a typical example I would say would be um, Shaquille O'Neal, who I mean, who used to play basketball, right? We'll say that he has an endowment for the basketball field because of his build or his height, and just because of his athleticism, for example. Now, certain people have certain endowments. Uh, maybe they have a very strong network, for example. That's that's one endowment you have. Maybe you don't. So you have to know what you have, and obviously build on that. Now, in terms of the work environment that you want to work in, do you want to work in a, uh, in, a, in a startup culture where most of the people you're working with are within a certain age range? Um, do you want to work in a culture where it's hierarchical or whether it's a flat structure? All those things you have to put um, together and decide what is best for you. Now then you move on to the goal setting stage, right? Now you think about it in terms of your 
your income goals, your professional goals, in terms of what you want to achieve, what industries and companies you like to work for, for example, what are the requirements to get accepted in those companies? Then you also have to start building your profile so you, at least you can start to attract hiring managers. It's important because a CV is just one part of the, uh, of the things that you have to do to get a job. Now you have to start networking. So that is why it's important that you create customized goals specifically for you and break them down into, okay, these are the people I want to work for, the company that I want to work for, for example, in this industry, this is a profile that they require. So once I start to think about it like that, it becomes easier to create a plan for me to be attractive to those kind of companies. Another thing I also, also talk about is having um, informational interviews, which is uh, where you talk to someone within the company you're interested in, you kind of understand the kind of work they do, you understand their day-to-day, -day, uh, the responsibilities they hold, uh, why they enjoy working there, why they don't. Um, that way you have clarity in terms of, okay, I have chosen this company for X, Y, Z reasons, and someone here is validating or not validating those reasons. That way you cannot decide whether that company is a good fit for you or not, because now you've spoken to insiders. So these are things that require a bit of investment Obviously, they have to be a timeline because it's important for you to set goals, uh, but have timelines um, for those goals as well. So if you say, look, in the next six months or next 12 months, this is where I want to be. These are the things I need to achieve to get there. Then that is what it is. Um, so in terms of your action, right, I always say that, look, you have to create a job search schedule. Um, we always say that looking for a job is a job itself. There's some truth to it. It's not always so. You don't have to spend uh, nine to five, yeah, 12 hours a day um, trying to get a job, but you have to create a timetable, whether it's two, three hours in your week, looking at um, you know, job sites, um, obviously building your, your network, maybe even learning a few skills on a weekly basis that could help you improve your skills. So all these action plans is important. Uh, because obviously you evaluated yourself, you set goals, but if you don't take action, nothing happens, right? Now let's even move to job hunting. You created a career plan for yourself, which is all well and good. Now you decided to take action. But let's break it down into what is effective. I'll say that always start with your network. Start with people that you know around you. And if you don't know anyone, then it's important that you start to build those network. Um, like I mentioned in the last slide where I said, look, um, you have to narrow down your job search based on industry, based on company, and you, start, you need to start networking with people in those industries. So at least you can have clarity on what it takes to, to get there. Another thing you also have to think about is what, which site do you spend most of your time when it comes to job searching? Uh, are you on LinkedIn? Are you on Jobberman? Are you on... Uh, Glassdoor, Indeed, there's so many other sites. But I'll say that it's typical for people to just jump from one site to another. You probably don't want to do that. What you really want to spend time on is picking a few sites. And obviously, if you narrow down your job search by industry and companies, you can always be on the lookout for specific companies. Maybe you, for example, you want to work with um, a GT bank. From time to time, you, you search whether GT bank is hiring for specific roles that's important. Um, that really helps you to, to be abreast of information or new information that's, that's coming up um, that you might be interested in. Another thing is obviously networking with hiring managers, networking with HR people, um, going to career fairs. I know that we're sort of in the middle of a pandemic, uh, so not a lot of conferences and career fairs are, are, are taking place, but it is important for you when those opportunities arise that you go and actually meet people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I mentioned something about boss hunting. You know, boss hunting purely is when you look into companies that you want to work for, look at in, into the departments that you'd be most interested in working um, with. Then now knowing, okay, who is in that department that I'm likely going to work for if I get that job? And you start to network like that. You can actually do that on LinkedIn. It's something I've done successfully for so many other people and he has worked, right? Another thing is the application process. This is where so many people get things wrong. Uh, you can see in my earlier side when I was talking about the job search statistics, 
where I said, you know, 40 people make dumb mistakes during the application process. A lot of those mistakes is really due to not reviewing the job application or understanding the instructions or even following the instructions. Um, so take your time, read the instructions on the job portal, on the job, uh, on the job board, understand what is required of you. If they ask for a cover letter, which is not always um, compulsory in some cases, I would say that you should do that. Um, if they ask that you approve certain documents, ensure you approve those documents. Don't miss out on little things that will cost you the job. And finally, always follow up. Um, it's, it's crazy when I see people just uh, applying for jobs and never follow up, even when they know the poster of the job or they know the hiring manager, for example. Ensure to follow up. Um, a lot of HR people have so many open positions, they're hiring for many, uh, for many roles, sometimes they just kind of uh, narrow down their, their job search, uh, or rather narrow down the candidates, and sometimes even if you're qualified, they could miss out on you, so you have the bonus because you're the one looking for a job to ensure that they think of you, you have to follow up either via email, send them a, a LinkedIn, an email, or, or try and reach out one way or the other through other networks to get hold of the hiring manager. Now let's talk about analyzing the job listing. Very soon we're going to uh, the breaking down of the CV and how to actually create the CV, right? Uh, but typically what I see with most people is that they spend an average of 20 to 30 seconds on the job post, then immediately apply. Oh, okay, uh, Andela is recruiting for uh, a web developer or something like that. And immediately they're just sending the application without really reviewing the job listing. It's important that you do so. How detailed is the job post? If it's a, a prominent company, uh, definitely they would create a job post with a breakdown of the requirements, uh, a breakdown of what the responsibilities are. It's important for you to actually know those things when you're reviewing the job post. Um, look at the keywords that appear most in that job post. Um, and we're going to talk about one specifically, uh, giving an example um, here, uh, when we look at the CV creation process, but look at specific things that appear in that job post, especially skills. What are the skills that um, they may have mentioned more than once during, um, on, the, on the job post, for example? What's the seniority level of that position? Do you qualify for it? Do you have that experience? What are the educational requirements? Uh, some of these things are not always they're important, but I'll say that you can actually overcome some of these things, right? Um, because seniority is one thing that is neither here nor there, depending on the company. You might have enough experience to, to, to apply for a senior level position based on um, the credibility of your past work. Um, and obviously, educational requirements is one thing that um, is not always the most important. So yes, you left you, you had a, an undergraduate degree in one course, but you dived into a different career. Um, your experiences could be more important than what you actually studied. But what I'm saying here is that it's important for you to understand these requirements. What other roles are similar to it, right? So uh, a web developer could be broken down into maybe a back-end role, a front-end role, uh, maybe the specific uh, web development skills, maybe it's Ruby on Rails, uh, maybe it's React or, or some other forms of, of, of web development. Look into those things, right? It's quite important. And, and how relevant are your professional and educational experiences? I mentioned this a lot. Then finally, think about the, the type of company and also their culture. Do you really want to work in this place? There's no point of uh, wasting your time and applying for a position or a company that you don't really want to work with. It's better off just uh, selecting a few and tailoring your resume or your CV to them. So now I'm going to go into how I break down a job position. This was a job post I saw um, a couple of days ago. It's for a digital marketer role. And I create and I usually create a canvas. The canvas breaks down the job listing based on certain key factors. I look at the hard skills. What are the skills that have been um, stated on the job listing. You know, you have SEO here, you have paper, click, you have social media and a number of others. Then what are the soft skills that I mentioned? You break that down because it's important when you are um, recreating your CV or customizing your CV, that some of these skills, if you have them, 
you ensure that they are stated on that CV. Then in the middle of the canvas, you can see the responsibility. One of the things that it wants you to do, you have to be very clear on it because when you include your work experiences or your, or your skill section, you want to be able to be deliberate and say, look, I have these skills. I have done some of these things in the past. This is what I've accomplished. And I'm the best person for this job. Then on the extreme left, where you see KPIs, I always try and visualize at the end of the day, when you have a job, there's going to be um, performances like KPIs, specifically what is expected of you. So I have to think about it from the job responsibilities um, that has been stated in the job post. What are the things that I think would be my KPIs? And I have to be very specific on some of these things when I am creating my CV. So here I put numbers of leads, right? What is the return on my investment on marketing? Uh, numbers of social media followers, maybe I've been able to grow my, uh, the, the company's social media following from 500 people on Instagram to 10,000. These are things that you want to state um, on your CV. Have you, uh, how many people have installed an app? This, for example, the job position here is, um, included um, marketing apps, right? So you want to be able to state that, look, not only have you marketed apps, but you've been able to convert leads um, into installs or into customers. And that's quite important when you are customizing your CV. The other information requiring the basic requirement and similar roles is also important. Uh, and I'll explain why shortly. Now, this is something I always do. Uh, I don't always recommend it to everyone, especially if you created a canvas. And by the way, the canvas can be rep replicated in an Excel sheet. You don't necessarily have to create something like this, but with an Excel sheet, you can break down the job listing before applying. But when it comes to a world cloud, what I'm trying to find out is how many times do certain words in the job listing appear? So we have digital marketing here, we have social media, um, insights and trends, you know, search engine marketing, display advertising. So I know that if these words appear a lot, it is something that is a skill uh, that the company is looking for. So that way I have it at the back of my mind. I say, okay, when I'm creating or customizing my CV, it's important that I showcase some of these things. Now let's go to, into the uh, CV creation. So here's how it always starts uh, when it comes to CVs, right? And there's a lot of information out there in terms of how should my personal information look like? And I think the most important thing I always tell people is make it simple. Your name, your address, telephone number, email. And in some cases, you can put your um, professional social handle, social media handle, whether it's your LinkedIn handle or your um, GitHub link. It's also important that your, profession, your email is professional. You don't want to put anything like sexybeast at gmail.com. That's crazy. Make it your name at gmail.com or something that is similar. Um, so it can be easier to remember and easier to follow. Now, in terms of your professional summary, for some, whatever reason, I'm one of those people that like to um, close on the professional summary at the end of creating my CV. Uh, and the reason why is that by the time I'm done with the skills section or the work experience section or all that section of my CV, I come back to my professional summary and it's a summary, right? So I try and summarize some of those aspects. Now you can see a couple of things I've highlighted here. I have included the keyword of the job title, which is digital marketer. Let's say, for example, um, you work in a company where you are the social media manager. It's quite simple. You're still a digital marketer. So if the, if the job title is asking for a digital marketer, uh, there's no reason why you can't say that, you know, you're an exceptional digital marketer instead of you saying you're an exceptional social media manager. Here, they've asked for seven years of experience. I've included it. Um, They've asked, um, not necessarily have they asked for this, but this is also important. When you say you're delivering 300% in marketing ROI, this is part of the KPI I had stated earlier. And this shows that mm, 
this guy has been able to really make a good investment. So we give him a certain amount of money, then we know that our marketing ROI is, is, is definitely good, right? Here we're seeing we're increasing market share for company X and some other things. But if you see in the professional summary that you are talking about specific skills that they're, requ that they're requested for, the display advertising, marketing funnels and sales pipelines. They've also spoken about WordPress. Do you have that skill set? Make sure it's very visible. Typically, hiring managers will start with your professional summary. They'll go into your skills and competencies sections. They'll also look at your work experience section. Uh, and typically, those are the three things. And note that a lot of hiring managers, because they have to re review thousands of CVs, they tend to only need to pick on the ones that have information or keywords that is tailored to the job. And they can, and because they do this every day, it takes them 10 seconds for them to actually review a CV. It doesn't take that long. You know, you just look at a couple of things and say, oh, okay, this guy seems to fit the bill. I'm going to save his CV for later um, as part of the shortlisting pile, or this guy doesn't fit the bill. I'm not going to save um, his CV. Uh, later, I'm just going to have to, to move on from here. So have that in mind when you are creating um, each section of your CV. Now, when it comes to skills and competencies, right, uh, a lot of the things I've depicted here are related to what you have in the job listing. Don't include skills that uh, are not required of you or are not relevant to the job post. There's no point. Uh, it's just going to confuse the hiring manager um, if you start to include other things that has no business with the specific job. Now, it's also important at this point, I also state that do not state skills that you do not have. Only state skills that you are competent at because you'll be tested and you'll be queried and you don't want to look like a fool when you get to the interview stage. However, what I'm saying here is that if you do have them, and they are relevant to the job listing, you include them um, as part of the skills and core competencies uh, position. Now at Reventify, uh, because our CVs are built in a very smart way, and we've built an AI algorithm, we tend to provide you with um, skills that are relevant to job positions. So you would see from our offerings that when you're creating a CV um, on the platform, would um, showcase specific skills that are relevant to, let's say, um, this digital marketer, or let's say an accounting position or a legal, or a legal officer position, whatever position it is, um, it's important that you not miss the mark and have the skills that are required for that position. A few things I should state here is that mostly include hard skills. You know, soft skills are very difficult to, uh, to evaluate and they don't really hold much water you know it's, it's easy to say I'm a, I'm a team player or i'm a self-starter it doesn't it, that's just like a buzzword nobody knows what that is to be honest you know in in the sense of of looking at your cv so you want to avoid including those things um another thing is that you do not want to make this an overkill try and have between seven to twelve listed skills um on your, on, on your CV cell, skills and, and core competency section. Um, there are some CVs I see maybe for developers, a lot of developers will try and have like an overkill where they have 15, 20 skills. I understand that that could be required in some cases, uh, but I always just say, look, stick to the very few that have been requested for on the job listing. There's no need to make uh, any extra efforts because um, it might not necessarily be what they are looking for, although you have it. Now, going into work experience, right? I, I made mention of a couple of things when you look at the canvas. Um, you want to make it simple, include your job title. If, if your last position was digital marketer, like I mentioned, you have it there. Even if it's a social media manager, you can still rephrase this and say, look, I am doing digital marketing. That is my core responsibility. The name itself or the job title that you hold does not matters less than what you do. Include the company name and location, 
the um, time you spend on the job is also important because that's how um, your years of experience is calculated, right? Then when you look at the bullet points, a couple of things I always did starts with an action verb. Sometimes I've seen CVs where people start with um, a pronoun. I did something, you know, no, 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 you don't want to have that. You know, you executed something, you developed, you managed, you created. These are things that sh should start a bullet point. Then like I mentioned earlier, you want to put your accomplishments. Don't state your responsibilities. Here, I said something had happened where you're managing a monthly budget of $18,000. That is very good, it's very clear. Someone on the HR team knows exactly what you have achieved. You've improved the click-through rate from 26 to 38%, and you're leading to an increase leading to an increase of, of, of 3,000 monthly customers, it is specific. Not that I am managing uh, the, uh, the search and display marketing campaign. Okay, yes, maybe everybody else that applied for that position has said the same thing. What makes yours unique? What makes yours stand out? What are the things that have you done that will make the HR person nod their head and say, oh, I need to interview this person. That is what you need to include in your work experience section. I've made mention of some of these things here. Start with an action there. Make the bullet points uh, a bit short. Don't make it, I, I tend to see some people that have work experiences and they have like 12 bullet points. Um, trust me, hiring managers don't read everything. They only need to pick on a few and they move on. Like I mentioned, um, typically they'll spend 10 seconds on a CV before deciding to review it later. Um, so it's important that you make it brief and you're always straight to the point. Now, finally, I'm going to talk about the education and certification um, section, right? You want to include the school you went to. If you had a honors degree or a very good, um, you came out with a very good class of degree, include it there. If you did not, I would say that do not state it at all. If you have a 2-2 two -two or a third class, please avoid uh, stating it on your CV. It doesn't make you look good, but obviously if you came out with a very good degree, state it. Same as the certification, only include certification that are relevant. If it's a digital marketing position and maybe you've done something all at gas, don't even include it there. It's not going to, it doesn't matter. You're just going to think you're confused. So please don't state it there at all. Now, these are the takeaways I'm gonna have before I move on to the Q&A section. Um, like I mentioned, emphasize accomplishments. Always talk about things that you have done that is measurable. Add the keywords that you're seeing from your job listing. Start with an action verb. Customize your CV for each job. Each job listing is different. Uh, it's very important. Another point is limit your CV to two pages. No matter what your experience is, I'm very sure you can summarize to one or two pages. I've seen MDs of banks with only a one page CV and these people have 20 years of experience. So you can also do the same thing. Make it visually uh, appealing. And finally, on, on this point, measurable, measurable results is extremely important. It just makes you stand out from others. In terms of what you should avoid, minimize uh, personal details. You don't want to put your uh, date of birth, uh, you know, the, the states that you are, your state of origin, and any other information that could create a bias. You know, you don't want to stay, state your gender anyway. It, it, it's not really that important at that point where you are submitting your CV. Um, like I mentioned, don't start with a personal profile, pronoun. Avoid buzzwords and cliches. Uh, don't lie. Don't lie, you will be caught. Don't lie at all on your CV. State things that you have that you can defend. Avoid unusual section. I know people always include um, references and that is getting old. There's no point of having to state your references. If you get to the, to the position where they are taking you seriously, they want to offer you a job, they will ask for references. I've, I've, that always happens. Um, avoid abbreviations or acronyms that the hiring manager will understand and Finally, I see this a lot with a lot of CV templates where there are a lot of graphs and tables and just you know funny lines and things like that. You want to make your CV as simple but also appealing uh, as possible. 
Uh, so just avoid a lot of this, you know, five star rating CVs or those all these lines that comes up that just makes your CV funny. Um, a lot of corporate organizations use an application tracking system, and some of those application tracking systems cannot scan graphs or tables. So some of the things that you include might get missing, and um, you don't want that to happen, obviously. So majorly, that's where I would say you know, we've come to the end of this presentation. So at this point, I'd like to, you know, call on everyone and say, look, if you guys have specific things that you'd like me to touch on, you have questions pertaining to what I have discussed, um, I'm open to, to hear from you all. And hopefully I can, I can uh, provide you with great answers. Uh, do you want them to type the questions in Q&A section, Sean? Oh yeah, sure. That that's also fine. Yeah, I think Why that not? was the questions there. One question, in fact. Oh yeah. So someone asked how many pages should an ideal CV have? I will say between one or two. Two is the maximum. Um, usually hiring managers do not look at a CV for long. I had mentioned it uh, many times that typically they'll spend about 10 seconds looking at your CV. Um, so you want to have all the relevant information on the first page, then you know, moving on to the second page where you have some further information. So I'm sure we have other, other questions. Great question. So someone asked, how is a cover letter designed and what needs to be in it? Great question. Uh, there's no one specific method uh, for a cover letter. Uh, one of the things I always tell people is that I hardly write cover letters uh, as a template. I always send it as an email um, to the hiring manager if I know the person, a lot of time is worth, it, it's not worthwhile writing the cover letter to who it may concern. Um, the cover letter is personal. You want to tell the person uh, why you're interested in that position, uh, what kind of skills you have that will be useful. And you want to list maybe two or three of your accomplishments that will make the person want to look at your CV. Uh, you want to make it very brief, I would say, uh, three to four sentences, short sentences max. Uh, but you want to ensure that whatever you include is relevant to that job. And you feel that um, it will make the hiring manager want to check your CV out. OK, so I think someone asked about um, what I mentioned regarding job responsibilities. Now, I didn't say job responsibilities are not needed. I said it's not as impactful as having key accomplishments. Instead of you stating what you do on a regular basis, which is your job responsibility, you want to state uh, what you accomplished on that job. If a hiring manager is looking for a customer service manager, I can assure you that he or she knows what a customer service manager does on a day-to-day -day basis, which is your responsibilities. What you want to be able to show is that you've accomplished certain things while doing that job that makes you valuable to a prospective employer. That is what you want to showcase on your CV. Now, another question relates to academic CV, right? Uh, yeah, so this is one of those areas where you are allowed to go beyond um, two pages. Academic CV tends to be a lot longer uh, because you're talking about um, specific things relating to uh, maybe your, your time in school, the kind of courses that you studied, uh, maybe the kind of projects that you have done. Uh, you want to give more information to, uh, on that. That is expected in the academia world. Uh, however, in the professional um, organizations, uh, that is not really expected that you list out everything that you've done while in school. 
So yes, for the academic, at the academic CV, you can have more than two pages. So another question relates to how long should you wait for a response? Um, it really depends. I would say that we typically want to wait on average seven to 10 days um, after you submitted your application before you reach out. Um, if you don't get a response, you, you can follow up within another three to four days. Um, and please, you want, uh, you want to follow up at least twice uh, after your initial um, response, your initial follow up rather. So you want to follow up a maximum of three times uh, before you say, look, um, if they don't call me, then that's fine. I have to move on. So interestingly, someone asked what's the difference between a resume and a CV. Uh, so there are a few differences depending on what part of the world you are, you are in. In America, uh, mostly North America, Canada and America, they call it a resume. Um, a resume is just a summary of your professional background. Typically it's one pages. So that's why a lot of hiring managers in the US expect you to have a one page resume. Um, however, in Europe, some other countries like in Nigeria, for example, we tend to use the word CV. Uh, both tend to be used um, you know, interchangeably. So some people will call the CV a resume, some people will call a resume a CV. However, the real term for CV is really um, from the academic world. So a CV specifically is all your, um, all the things that you have, all your work experiences plus your um, your educational experiences. So ten, usually CV tends to be longer than a resume. Uh, but now because we use it interchangeably, um, there really hasn't been much of a difference in, the, in those key terms. Yes, interesting question. Someone asked about, you don't have work experience, right? Uh, that, that's a wonderful question. I always say, look, if you don't have a professional work experience, uh, you may have some experience whilst you were in school. Um, maybe you were a part of a society, for example. What did you do in that society? Maybe there are specific projects that you have done. Maybe you've done a case study for a company before. And I always state this, that it's important that even if you're a graduate, that you get yourself involved in some form of volunteering work. Uh, obviously, I mean, you can't go back to school. So if you're never in a society, you can't stay there even in a society. But it's very important that you get yourself involved in some form of um, professional work. Uh, one of the things that I've mentioned to a few people I've worked with in the past when I did some consulting work was um, when you're boss hunting or looking for prospective managers you want to work with, when you engage them, try and find out what the issues are and try and create a case study for their company. If you create a case study for their company, then you can include that case study of some sort as a project on your CV. That's something that you can do to show to a, uh, a hiring manager that you have done some professional work in the past. Interestingly, someone mentioned some positions require seven to 10 years. How can that be possible in two pages, especially if that person worked in multiple organizations? Trust me, uh, it can. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I have uh, close to 15 years professional uh, experience and my CV is on one and a half pages and I have worked for six companies. Uh, so I'll say, look, that you have to review that CV, make sure it's brief, make sure it's uh, straight to the point. Uh, however, you don't have to include all the organizations you worked for. Include the ones that are highly relevant to the job position that you're applying for. Now in your personal summary or your career summary, you can discuss your length of experience and some of the companies you've been able to be a part of. Um, but in terms of your CV, make sure it's two pages um, if you're looking to get a job in the corporate world. Let me, I'm looking through, is there a need for a professional summary or career objective? Yes, uh, uh, Tunde, just in case you didn't join us on time, um, there is a need for it. Um, typically that is where the high manager starts to look out for. 
So if you, for example, are applying for an accounting position, your professional summary will let their hiring manager know whether you are a good fit or not, even before they get to your work experience or other sections of your CV. Um, and I always say that the summary is more important than the career objectives. Uh, career objectives tend to be more forward looking. Professional summary is really about your track record, what you've done in the past. So I always prefer professional summary over career objectives. So uh, Omo Yeni asks if it's advisable to indicate you're on the job currently while applying for another. Um, sure, why, why, why wouldn't that be valuable? Especially if you are with a competing brand. Sure, um, there's no reason why you can't, you can't date that. Um, they will find out eventually because I can tell you if you are um, at the last stage of the recruitment process. They will want to find out references. They want to know where you currently work. And they tend to do a lot of KYC. So it's better you state it up front than for, for you to miss on that. And, and they find out eventually. So another question is on asked if we should include grades. Um, yes, you can include grades only if you are proud of those grades. That's what I tell people. Like, look, if your grades are mediocre, um, there's no point of having it there. Uh, you know, just just always always state something that you know you you are you are proud of that you know that whoever looks at this will want to speak to you for that. Uh, so yeah, you can actually include your grades. Then Maxwell states, uh, do you have to always edit your skills to meet the job requirement? Yes, uh, I cannot tell you how important that is. Uh, in, you know, before I started Reventify, when I was obviously helping people to create their CVs, I can assure you that a lot of people that had customized their CV tend to see uh, better results. You know, in many cases, we'll even see people that will get uh, an interview for every three positions that they have applied for which some people think is, I mean, that's just amazing. You know, if they're going to get, if you apply for 10 jobs and you get um, interviewed for three of those positions, that, that is as good as it gets. And the reason why you can get those interviews is because your skill set is very tailored to that job. Very important. So this is where, okay, I, I see that Luke here is asking, how can you design one CV? that cuts across different fields. Mm. Well, the thing is not for you to design one CV. Um, <laughs> that is very difficult to do, except, um, except those roles are extremely similar. But in terms of different fields, you have to have multiple CVs. Um, in, some years ago, uh, maybe five, six years ago, I probably had about four or five CVs. Uh, for different type of job positions. And I can tell you that, you know, depending on the job listed, one CV is more relevant than the other. So let me go on to Emmanuel. What's your advice for those writing for academic purpose? Can I add my age? Um, no, I'll, I'll state that you don't add your age. Uh, a lot of times hiring managers can assume your age based on your when you graduated uh, from, from uni. Um, so that's something that you don't want to just state out there that this is your age. So Hemant, someone asked if we could get the slides or the recording for this session. Uh, I'm not so sure if that is possible. Uh well, yeah, I was about to ask you if we can put uh, the the recordings on our YouTube channel, right? That way they can access our YouTube channel. Uh, if that's allowed uh, for us. Sure, sure. I definitely have no problem with that. Sure. So, then, uh, yeah, then uh, it will be available in our YouTube platform. You can go to YouTube and search uh, NUTM, Nigerian University of Technology and Management. 
uh, we'll be able to upload uh, the video by end of the day today or early morning tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful. We still have a number of questions to go. Uh, another question regarding interview invite. I did you wrong. You, you said you didn't get your interview invite or you didn't see the invite until a day after. Uh, remedy the situation, you just have to reach out to whoever sent you that email. If it was not an automated email and uh, yeah, you have to have a very strong excuse for, for them wanting to um, see you again. Uh, but that's just the simplest way to do it. Sean, just one thing sort of bring to your notice that, you know, we are almost there with the time. And yes, we are. Yeah, and I think, you know, we can take last two questions of sort and then maybe we'll close the session. However, they can write to us and then, you know, now we can sort of forward some questions to you. Of course, of course, of course. Okay, so last two questions. Right. So yes, uh, someone asks if, you know, you don't have um, work experience and you're a fresh graduate, should you leave the job experience section blank? Um, I'll advise not to because you will find others that are similar to you that have um, included specific things in their job experience, which makes them more competitive for that job position. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that uh, you want to include projects or maybe leadership positions that you had whilst you were in schools, maybe in particular society. So you can ask, you can add some of those things as part of your, your experience, maybe some volunteering role that you have done in the past. It's very important to have work experience. Uh, we, we, it doesn't matter how small it is, whether it's three months, six months, whatever it is, you need that um, as part of your CV. Then another person asked, final question, can we have a professional CV template? I think that is Adi Dinroy again. Uh, yes, you can, you can have access to, uh, to it. Um, matter of fact, I do have an offer for um, the participants for the session. Um, if you go to Reventify, I will send, matter of fact, I would coordinate with Hemant and we will send you um, a link so you can have access to um, the CVs on, on Reventify. So I think that is about it. Um, I assume that I'll get more questions either via my email. I'm always open, um, but for um, others, um, matter of fact, I think I have one offer I just wanted to just showcase. Um, okay, sorry. Just before we close, so what is going to happen here is um, I'm going to send this out uh, with the help of payments. We have um, a job course. It's free of charge for now. Uh, we're not currently charging for, for this course. It took us several months to create this course that helps you not only create your CV, build your LinkedIn profile, help you to network with hiring managers, um, design your cover letter, so many other things are a part of this job course. And it's very instrumental uh, as you forge ahead to build your career um, going forward. So this is something that I'll ask MUTM to, I'll, I'll send them a link and they can share with you. Um, and obviously it's free of charge, like I mentioned, you don't have to pay for it. And hopefully if you go through that course, that will really help uh, you know, in more or less just your career advancement, not just your CV creation, but your career advancement. So that's something that I wanted to depict. So without that uh, being said, I think we can end the session, um, So thank you very much everyone for listening and thank you for having me here. Thank you so much, Sean. I definitely took away a lot of things from the session and I'm sure participants would have taken a lot of, a lot of things from this session. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, and, and willing to do this session with our uh, prospective applicants. Uh, okay, so before I close the session, I'll just uh, like to say that, you know, we are accepting application for the second cohort of NUTM Scholars Program. And uh, the deadline to the application is 1st June uh, 2021. So if you're in the process of applying, do complete the application before that, uh, so that, you know, you will be able to avoid last minute hassles. 
with that, best wishes and thank you for joining the session. Bye.